All right guys, so welcome back to part three of the NSX cage install. Riley has done an incredible job, and to say that I'm happy would be a, a gross misunderstatement. The car is awesome, the cage is incredible. I really wanted something that was very similar to an FIA GT3 style cage. Uh, Riley delivered, as to be expected, so thank you Riley. Of course. You did a killer job there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go through it all and kind of show you everything that's on there. I'm not going to, Riley will, since he did everything and uh, spent lots of uh, lots and lots of hours under it, inside of it, and uh, basically cursing me while he was doing it. Uh, some really cool features up there. We'll show you some of his favorite welds and also some of my favorite parts of the cage. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start off with what is my favorite part of the cage, which is the door bars and the FIA bars. Uh, the gussets in there and kind of how everything looks came out really well and is exactly what I had hoped for. So I'm gonna let Riley kind of explain what's there and uh, why it's there. So I think last time you saw them, the taco gussets were probably on them, maybe the FIA gussets, I don't remember, but uh, taco plates are obviously welded. It's all the way around their one piece, um, which is very happy with, you know, get one seam right on the back. Um, and the taco gussets on the FIA bar to the upper door bar. Um, obviously all finished welded in. Finished welding, you know, some thin sheet metal to the tubing was a little bit of a challenge, but got it handled. Very happy with how it came out. Um, like I said, I think in the last video they're bowed. Um, give Amir as much space as we can with his windows and regulators in there. Um, and they're two continuous tubes, so an inverted U and a U welded together in the center. And then the taco gusset to really strengthen the whole thing, keep it all together. So, um, ultimately, Pretty easy ingress and egress, um, and also very, very strong, very, very, uh, you know, tight to the body, tight to the car, and uh, ultimately probably the safest option as far as uh, strength and rigidity, so. So it's a style you'll see on like an FIA GT3 car, like the Porsche 911 GT3R, the Ferrari 48 GT3, pretty much all of them run this style. And I don't think it was even in the SCCA rulebook, so we had to get clarification that we could even do it. And to show you what Riley's talking about with uh, the fitment and everything, so here is the plane of the cage uh, right here, and the door basically goes right over it. So the door panel would typically come out to about here, your arm is there, and when I'm driving, I would have an issue with my door hitting, or my arms hitting the door panel, and it was really tight, and with the way that he fit the cage, it's pretty much perfect now to the point where getting in and out is surprisingly easy. I thought it was gonna be really challenging, but it's actually almost easier than it used to be because we also did a seat mount. Uh, and when I say we, I mean Riley did, <laughs> that he could probably show us right now. So do uh, you wanna show us the seat mount as well? So we had to drop the seat, um, not only for uh, driver comfort and visibility and all that, but mostly to get Amir's head away from the cage. Uh, you want to have some defensible space in there just so worst comes to worst, you end up on your lid, you're not going up towards the cage, the cage doesn't come down you and uh, you know, helmet's not getting paint on the cage. Um, so in order to do that, he had the original seat side mounts that you see like Brit or Recaro or Sparco or whomever, they're, they're just side plates that basically bolt to the seat on the side, the side mounts, and then he had a slider, and then he had the grid seat mount that actually bolts into the car. Um, so to get the seat lower, we kind of had to ditch all of that uh, to kind of get it all the way down. Um, so to do that, we use a tubular structure, so a bunch of tube bungs that bolt into the original locations in the back, tube bungs that bolt into the side of the seat, um, your main tubes that run the whole length of the mount, and then we've got a truss that runs in the front and catches the front mounts um, It's a little dark, so you might not be able to see it. Maybe we'll take yeah. a photo at it. And then we've got the two uh, taco plates that run basically, effectively, the full span of the seat and really strengthen this tube and make sure it's not going to deflect at all, as well as tie in the truss. So the whole thing's very, very stout, um, very sturdy, doesn't go anywhere. So, you know, worst comes to worst, he's staying in the car. He's staying right, <laughs> staying put. Um, so like, try to make know, it as light so as this thing as is possible. more sturdy than it's ever been, and there's only two bolts holding it. So, yeah, <laughs> so with all four bolts in there, it's it's it ain't going anywhere. It's good. <laughs> so um, that was kind of the, the last thing we did. Really make sure the seat fits the car, make sure it's centered, all that stuff. So you know, when he's in there, cage isn't moving, seat's not moving. It's good to go. So there were two reasons why I wanted to get that extra space. The first being, obviously, I wanted more headroom for myself. The second being that uh, I wanted to lower the center of gravity. The three heaviest things in a car are typically the engine being the heaviest, the driver being the second heaviest, and the transmission being the third. So if you can lower the driver down, uh, you can drop the center of gravity, uh, you know, a small fraction, but if you do that with everything in the car, it adds up. And being that, uh, you know, 
I am the second heaviest part of the car at 165 pounds. Uh, bringing me down about an inch and a half, two inches is pretty big. And then obviously when, you, when we're remounting things, we always mount them lower in the car to help bring that CG lower. So uh, a little bit of the how and why we do some of the things we do. And I know Riley in his own car with the Trans Am, same story, like if you look at a car, everything's mounted as low as possible. And that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So um, that part of the cage is super killer. I will show you some of the other parts of it, and I think uh, probably show you the rear neck since that's a really neat area where Riley had to be very creative back there. All right, so in the back of the car, I think in the last video I was talking about these two sleeve clamp bung peg things. Uh, so basically, per the rules, got to keep his rear glass, so that means you got to come out above it. Um, you know, not necessarily ideal, but we got to work with it. So we got these pegs from Rough Stuff. They're a uh, solid chromoly peg in there. There's two bolts that pull it, pinch it, they're inside the car. Um, and then it uses this very thick chromoly sleeve. Let's just see it. Let's get you in there. Oh, we can't really see it, so I'll just cut to a shot of it. Okay. Um, so it uses this very thick chromoly sleeve. Um, and then we did, uh, we did have to use a miter joint, because you're not allowed to put a bend back here, but we got approval, used a miter joint. So inside this miter joint, there's actually a piece of eighth inch plate that's welded inside this tube, so that they're actually butted up against each other. So rather than having a, a hole that this can kind of waller in and move around, there's actually two sheets butted up against each other. Um, the end of that clamp and the sheet inside the tube, then a root pass and a cap pass on this tube. So safe to say this isn't going anywhere noted the diagonal into it, and then used a bolt-in mount on his struts um, so that essentially this, this whole rear section can be removed. So you pull the bolts off the shocks, or the nuts off the shocks, uh, pinch bolts out, and the whole thing slides back and you can take it off so that Shunmir have to service the engine or maybe unfortunately pull the engine out, something like that, <laughs> it's possible and you can get it out normally. You don't have to deal with trying to dodge tubes and all that junk. So, um, you know, a little unconventional, but ultimately, uh, you know, I think a pretty slick solution to the problem. Yeah, this turned out about as awesome as I could have hoped for. And the cool thing is that it's so easy to remove that if I ever need to work on the engine, it's basically, I think a total of like eight bolts, if that, and it comes right out. And with where it is, the, I really don't think I'll have to remove it for, you know, very much of anything at all. Just looking at it right now, everything looks pretty serviceable. I also like how well it fit the catch can here. This is kind of one of those things where like, oh, you might have to relocate it, but it fits perfectly with the catch can that Christian made. Like the fittings go right around it. So I thought that was kind of a, a yeah, very, it on through there. yeah, cool, <laughs> cool fitment thing. Yeah. Uh, but much better. Uh, we were really worried because at first we couldn't add uh, rear bars and we were going to do a petty bar, which is basically a bar that comes uh, from about here on the main hoop down to the front corner. And if you read any of the rule books for cars where you cannot get a rear section, like a Del Sol, um, I think is the one that they typically cite in the rule books. Uh, it's a way to create the, or basically to prevent the cage from crushing it on itself. I'll let Riley kind of explain that. Like, I guess, what's the concept behind a petty bar? Uh, so obviously you're giving it some vertical strength because you're, you're bracing your main hoop down to one of the front corners. So if the main hoop was to take an impact, it's gonna push into that corner. Um, it also creates some triangulation in the cage because if you build a cage and you have nothing going between any of the corners, you don't have a triangle, so it's just a box. And just like any box, if you step on the corner of it, it'll tip. Um, so obviously it's a very strong metal box, but if you flip <laughs> a car on top of it, it, it can still flop front to back, side to side. Um, so the petty bar kind of, it aids in that. Even with the rear section and everything else, it will aid in that. Um, but without the rear section, it's somewhat mandatory to keep your box square um, and while it's a very good option as far as safety it's not very street car you know, you're not going to put a passenger in there with a petty bar it's very very dangerous i would never <laughs> recommend it um, and being you know it, it, to do it correctly noted into joints it makes it somewhat irreversible you can't really remove it either um, so this was kind of a, a better alternative. Thankfully, the, uh, the rule guys were able to work with us on it and uh, get him some triangulation to the cage so that it is braced to the rear tower. So for it to tip over, it has to push the towers and everything out of the way, which is very unlikely. Um, and, and I think ultimately it's a, it's a great uh, solution to, to the problem. And, you know, a little bit easier to use than the petty bar. So. <laughs> 
yeah, so I'm very happy about that. Thank you to the Global Time Attack Rules guys for working with us to make this happen. And I feel much safer with this the way that it is. And then on top of that, uh, we talked a little bit about future proof in the cage and Riley and I talked about that with like basically trying to make this a bit more of a structural member. And I know Riley talked about potentially running bars from like yeah, the so, rear, right? So once, once we move into a class where, where we're allowed to, I think going from the belt bar uh, node, so if you can see in here from basically this joint, upper door bar and belt bar node uh, up to the bottom of this corner right here, once we can pierce firewalls and whatnot, um, would really kind of give it, it would actually triangulate the thing, make it a triangle so that even if the cage were to uh, the rear section is trying to pull up on the main hoop or anything like that, it would have to crush this tube and pull this one off of the cage, which even less likely. Um, <laughs> along with that, running the rear section being that the engine is behind a mirror, um, you're to back it into a wall or something like that, you run out of talent and smash the rear of the car, we don't really want this, although it's very light, getting up there to a mirror. So this kind of helps prevent that putting the other triangulation tube in there from the door bar and the belt bar up to the strut tower will make it even less likely that that thing can actually crush the car and push it all forward into the driver, you know, our boy Amir, so. Yeah, so very cool. Uh, I've given Riley some very difficult challenges with this, not only with the shape, the rules and whatnot, but also to make it future-proof so that that way when we do move to limited class and unlimited, the cage is basically ready to go that he can just add on to rather than having to completely re-engineer the entire car. All right, so thank you so much to Riley for not only uh, building the cage and doing an incredible job, but also for suffering with me through the whole <laughs> filming process. I know he's normally not the biggest fan of this kind of stuff, so you guys are very lucky because he is uh, not the biggest fan of this stuff, but having his expertise has been huge, so no, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to, to, to do the cage. I'm happy with how it came out, and I'm glad that, you know, you're gonna be nice and safe while you're out there killing it. And I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. I love what Amir does. And uh, I mean, I'll suffer through the filming if I have to. So. <laughs> so thank you to Riley, he's too kind. And honestly, having him work on the car is an honor for me. The work is incredible. I know that I couldn't have gotten a good cage or as good of a cage anywhere else. And then on top of that, not only did he do this incredible cage for me, but he also delivered two cars to LA from Sacramento. He finished up a roll bar and a Supra and then delivered this as well, which is awesome. So I know a big concern for some of the California or Southern California guys is it's a little bit far. It's not that bad. And if it's the right job, Riley will come pick it up and bring it back for you. Yeah, so we're full service, man. Yeah. I like, I, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I like driving. So no, we're full service. I like I like giving the whole deal. Like if I can pick it up and drop it off and, you know, really make it easy for somebody. That's I mean, that's ultimately what I'm trying to provide the service. Perfect. So. Uh, it doesn't, you don't get a better cage service than that. Uh, couldn't be happier. If you need anything, hit up Riley at RS Motorsport. Uh, I will put his contact information in the description and you guys should be good to go from there. But thank you for watching and thank you again to Riley. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the opportunity. I can't wait to see it go around the track. Yeah, so we have one week to get it ready for Super Lab Battle. So thank you for getting it done in time, Riley. And we'll see you guys at uh, Super Lab Battle.